Okay, first Q add on in the house. Many contour. Many contour, please. Yes. Of, uh, of ours that uh, we are performing an add-on sulcus lens. It's a trifocal lens. This patient's had cataract surgery in the past, pseudophagy. This eye actually has a T5, so this is a toric lens in the eye. And she's fairly happy with her distance vision, but she desires to have improved near intermediate vision. We've actually done her first eye, her left eye, yesterday. And I talked to her this morning, and she is very happy she can actually read and uh, see her phone and read books with her left eye already. So it's been one day with the add-on lens, and she is very happy. So she's very pleased about getting this eye done as well. The idea of a sulcus-based add-on lens is a very intriguing idea as a secondary I option for patients who already are pseudophagic. And the idea is fairly straightforward. Place a biocompatible, anatomical compatible lens in the sulcus to allow for Improvement of range of vision. Is this lidocaine? Lidocaine. Put some lidocaine in here as well. And I want you to think about the possibilities as well of even considering primary implantation in eyes perhaps where we may have a concern, perhaps eyes where we have a high degree of cylinder. These add-on lens can do a lot in terms of the ability to uh, allow for reversibility as well. Um, we are just actually going to be loading the lens. This happens pretty fast. So let's take a camera view of that. I'm making an incision here. Uh, minimum incision is 2.4 millimeters that can be used. So you can choose what you're comfortable with. And uh, this will basically allow for the placement in the eye. Now let's get a view of the add-on lens. It's a very unique lens. Most lenses are one millimeter in thickness. This is 200 microns, 0.2. 20% the thickness of a regular IOL. It's vaulted anteriorly to keep it away from the existing lens to reduce the risk of intranoticular calcification. Now, there are many different types on the market. This is the first Q add-on lens from Medicontour. And uh, this has a unique design. I don't know if we can see a picture on the, on the uh, camera, but just to show it, it's got a four-point fixation. It is not the typical C-loop. And because of this, the rotational stability is optimized. The material is an interesting uh, copolymer of hydrophobic and hydrophilic design, 25% uh, water, and uh, the edges of the optic are round edged. And this allows, again, to reduce the risk of chafing of the iris. We always worry about this, of course. And uh, so this lens is really designed optimally for the solid displacement. Um, I typically use a cohesive viscoelastic agent to create space in the sulcus, lifting up the iris, and uh, this allows for the placement of the lens in there. Probably the most challenging part of the surgery is folding the lens, uh, which isn't really challenging, but uh, not, to put, not to put pressure on our, on our staff. Um, but uh, it basically tucks into the, uh, to the bridge of the, uh, 
of the cartridge and then place through a single-handed injector system. I'm going to use a viscoelastic in my other hand to allow me to, to guide the, uh, the haptics in here as well. So there's the lens here. Are you okay? Are you guys okay? Yeah, you're fine. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you the microscope. Thank you. We're going to uh, find the uh, lens here in the cartridge. It will go bevel down. And it's a very controlled delivery. This basically allows for, is that, what size incision was that blade? Let me just check on that. Can I see that for a second? Let me just, I'm just going to enlarge the incision just slightly just to allow for me to place the cartridge into the, into the um, anterior chamber. I want to I do this without much struggle. Just slightly here. There we go. Now this can be done probably wound assisted, but I'm going to use an intracameral delivery just to make sure I have control of the lens into the eye. There we go. Okay, let's proceed now. I'm going to start here fairly planar. Aim posteriorly a little bit. There the hop is unfolding. Nice little rotation. You guys can see okay? Yeah, yeah. Great. I'm going to try to tuck the leading haptics underneath the iris. And I want to avoid too much posterior displacement of the lens. Controlling delivery here. There we go. Do we have a hook I can use? So we have three haptics done. I try to get four in, but you know, sometimes you got to do another maneuver here. We have a bias tattoo. Can you use that? So there we go. There's the lens. Now this comes at a torrent platform soon to Brazil. We can rotate it if we need to. And uh, you can see this lens is positioned quite well centration wise. Now that's the surgery basically. It's fairly efficient. For viscoelastic removal, we can use automated IE. I'm just going to manually uh, express the viscoelastic as cohesive. Do you take some special care about the interfaces between the eyewalls? You know, I mean, I, I, I don't typically do too much there. I mean, this will basically hydrate and clear. Very much like ICLs, you know. With ICLs, I don't like to go and do too much work under the lens. So basically, over time, it hydrates up. The vault may be a little bit more on the first day. That's okay. And uh, this is... Oh, thank you. And so basically, that's the surgery, essentially. We're going to hydrate the incision. This is carbocol. You can see that the... Uh, Lens is well positioned. Let's ask her to. Uh, hola, Luz, Lucio. Hola, a Luis. Oh, hola, Luis. Luis. Hola, para Luis. Para Luis. Okay, great. You can see the centration. Look at this right bang on. That's the coaxial light reflex. Looks quite good. I'm happy with that. So, you know, that's basically the procedure. So, think about the possibilities of patients perhaps who have residual cylinder, patients who perhaps will desire some enhanced range of vision. This lens comes in an EDOP design as well. Notice that there are only six rings, because this lens is an interesting design. It's a combination of diffractive and refractive technologies. So think about it again. So it's, it's got the benefit of having the diffractive design of uh, basically splitting light, along with the refractive design to provide more continuous range of vision. They call it EPS, and it's a clever way that they can enhance the continuous range of vision intermediate as well as near. And Sherrod asked, why don't you go with the IA? Do you prefer to like, irrigate the AC with the Were you injecting OVD during the injection of the IOL with your left hand? No, I didn't, do, I didn't do that, but I have it ready if I need it. That's why I kind of like the OVD in my, in my other hand. Just in case I need it, I can inject some. I didn't have to do it with the APS of the mistake. Now, I, I should mention that we could have gone with the IA automated to remove the viscoelastic. I didn't choose to do this here. And the reason is because sometimes in these patients, especially with their many years post-op, there might be some zonular issues, there might be some risk of vitreous coming forward. So I prefer to do a controlled maneuver, just simply just irrigating the OVD out. I will put the patient on some acetazolamide, a couple of doses. We did this yesterday as well. And this prevents a post-op IOP spike, but I'd rather deal with that than deal with any vitreous. And sometimes if you do enough of these cases post-op, you'll see Sometimes vitreous can sneak around the zonules, even in routine post-op, pseudopathic patients. So that's my rationale for not using 
automated um, uh, IA. Okay, well, I mean, that was a pretty boring case, but I guess that's what we want to see when it's boring, right? We want things to be boring and controlled. I'm very excited about the potential. I mean, I, I have to be, obviously be worried about concerns around sulfur uh, irritation, but this lens has shown a good, very good history. I think by its very thin design, round optics, four-point fixation, it seems very biocompatible, very safe to use in these eyes. I would be careful maybe in an eye that had a very small sulcus. Maybe in a nanothalamic eye, we should be careful using this case. But in most eyes, with the sulcus being relatively normal size, I think it's a very good option. And patients who would desire something after pseudophagia, or even primarily, maybe somebody who you're worried about maybe long-term having a problem, you put a monofocal in the bag, um, trifocal in the salt because you can take it out if you don't like it, mm -hmm. right? Or eat up, you can exchange it, fairly mm -hmm. straightforward. So think about what you could possibly do uh, in terms of the options of using multiple uh, IOLs at the time of surgery as well. Well, that's all we have for this case. I have other cases later on, so stay tuned. Pickle Brazil. I thank you very much. We will talk soon for your surgery. Agora a gente vai dar